good morning children today we are going to learn that first lesson introduction to the history so introduction to the history that is the first lesson we have to move on the introduction what do you mean by history introduction to the history before that we have the subject like social science in that social science we have a part is yes or no we have different three parts which are those history geography and political science we have three parts in social science history geography and political science so when that why we want to read in the history subject we have to know that society how we have to follow the culture traditional these things and all with the help of social science we have that taught to us is yes or no so like that in that social science we have one part that is history so what do you mean by history so where it comes from these things and all we are going to learn so information about the history introduction is nothing but information is no where we will get we will get uh, yesterday's and and last year last month and day before many many years ago what happened in the previous year these things and all we are going to learn in that history yes or no so what do you mean by history history is nothing but the systematic of the history what do you mean what is the meaning of history the systematic presentation of the past event is called history it introduces history which subject it will introduce history will introduce the journey of human beings which subject it will introduce history will introduce the journey of human beings and while explaining the historical incident and accuracy of the time place person as maintained okay while we are explaining the historical incident we have to know the time place person and it is mandatory means maintain we have to maintain the place time accuracy when where and by whom it happened these things and all we have to maintain this so the history history is derived from the greek word the word is there no history this word derived from the greek word it comes from greek word that word means historia historia meaning know this means we have to know this so history is nothing but study of the past so history the word comes from a uh, greek word the history the word derived from the greek word and this means historia historia means know this so okay so history means study of past the systematic presentation of the past event is called as a history so when we are explaining anything we have to know the time place where when otherwise if you are not telling these things means it is a story so once upon a time there was a king in a place see example and given so once upon a time there was a king in a place he fought the war so here i have not mentioned any king name and any place name and any war where it has happened when it has happened by whom it has happened these things i am not at all mentioned so second sentence ashoka who ruled pataliputra in 261 bce fought the kalinga war see i explain now ashoka ashoka is the king name who ruled where he ruled he ruled in the pataliputra when he ruled 261 bc he ruled and which war it's a war uh, he connected he done in the kalinga war by the time i explained everything is yes or no this is called history if we are not telling any in the place time person means that is not a history it is called as a story next why we want history see children see what is this when we are touch the frame what happened you will get burn yes or no this experience will you again touch the fire no you will not touch see once you will touch the fire again you will not touch why because you know already it's a experienced by burning yes or no once you will touch means you will get burn no again you should not touch the fire because we have the sensation so Well, these things and all, where we will be there, it will be there on our mind. Is yes or no? In memory, so we know that is a fire. If we are touching the fire, means we will hurt. So next time we will not touch. So this is called as a memory, means recollection. So for example, if you are not having the memory, means what happened? Again and again, same things we are doing, and again we are that getting hurt for our body. So that is pain will be there. 
yes or no like that history is a memory history is a memory of the uh, society so if humans did not have memory at all we would have committed for the same mistakes yes or no if we are not having the memory means we will mistake every day it will correct us it will wrong us so we have to commit it for the same things like that only as a human beings need memory like that society also need history so the memory of service history serve as a memory how like history will serve history will serve like as a memory in the society state nation and whole world it is a uh, making a good things history is recorded the good and wrong decision which is a good and which is a wrong this decision decision and all where we can see we can see in the history so that's why we are telling history is like a memory for the society history is a memory like the society so why we want to study history why we want to study the history without studying history we cannot get ideas from that so what is the use of that see history is our past history means it is known as our past we have to know our past yes or no if you are knowing the past means you can build it in properly in the future so help history help us to understand the people and society so which uh, which uh, subject will help us to understand the people means history help us to understand the people and society and also help us to change and how a society how they are living It means uh, yeah, early humans how they are ruled and ancient people how they are live in the life at present how we can live in the lead the life these things and all we have to see in the by the history and history give the importance to our own lives this how we are living they are given the importance and also a contribution of moral understanding history will give the contribution of moral understanding it will develop the personality personal personal identity so it will provide us for the identity so it has known as a human culture and civilization history help us to know about the human culture and civilization and also to know about the kings okay how how many kings are ruled over in the world and which kingdom ruled how the normal people they are ruled next how they have developed their skills and everything with the help of history we can know that yes or no next herodotus who is he herodotus is the father of history he is the first person okay he is the first person to show the world how to construct the world in the immensely to valuable history herodotus of greece was the first person to show the world how to construct the world and with the valuable things so this person we called as a history father of history he is from greek okay and he is a greek historian he is the first person to collect the materials so who is the first person to collect the materials herodotus is the first person to collect the uh, materials in systematically okay he collected every uh, material to systematically and tested their accuracy means correct the information arranged them in the systematic manner he to collect each and every information and make it a systematic manner so that's why he is the first person in the history to collect the evidence so that's why he is called as a father of history next sources so sources sources means evidence so one who construct the history is an historian so the person who construct the history you know that person we called as an historian historical evidence to be particular and authentic about the history while we are collect the historical any evidence means should be particular means correct information authentic means genuine the information there cannot be a history without sources without sources it is not a history so in that sources of history classified into the two groups which are those that is a literary sources and another one is the archaeological sources see sources of the history this is the chart of the history see then the source of history there are two types that is literary sources another one is the archaeological sources in that again literary sources there are two types one is written literature another one is 
oral literature again literature they are making two classified that is the native literature another one is the foreign literature when we are going to oral literature there are three types which are those means lavanese folk tales and another one is folk tales lavanese folk tales and uh, history legendaries okay history legendaries so there are three types in oral literature lavanese folk tales and historical legendaries while we are seeing on the archaeological sources we can see that monuments coins inscription and other archaeological manner remains okay monuments coins inscription other archaeological remains this is the chart of source of history now one by one we have to learn what is the literary sources literary means written or orally convey the information we have to gather with the orally like literary means that it is written or conveyed the information a history book is a literary sources or archaeological discovered it okay like a monuments and coins manuscripts etc see for example literary means i will give the example literary means a written literature written they are written in that book so which is the word for example here yeah, history book it is a literary sources here yeah, history book is a literary sources and it is called as a, we can see that archaeological discover also for example they given the monuments points manuscripts like that okay these are called as a literary sources in that literary sources there are two types which are those there is a written literature written literature and oral literature in that written literature again there are two types which are those native literature and foreign literature in that written literature written literature there are two types native and foreign literature in that oral literature there are folk songs stories ballads mythas and legends ballads mythas and legends these are the we can see in the oral literature these are the sources of history there are two types written literature and oral literature so in that uh, written literature we can see that written lit, uh, foreign literature and native literature okay so one is written in the literature and another is a oral literature so who are in the written literature is constructed by the literators who will construct the written literature who are the educational uh, who are a literator no that people will construct the written literature while a uh, oral literature is created by the illiterate means who are not studied no that person they will correct uh, create, construct the oral literature who will construct written written literature uh, li who will construct the written literature means that is Ill uh, illiterate okay who are studied means that people will create the written literature who will construct the oral literature that is illiterate okay sorry children written literature constructed by lit uh, literators and oral literature created by the illiterate so we can see that folk songs uh, folk songs stories ballads and mythas legends these things and all we have to see in the oral literature next archaeological sources archaeological sources are the basically in the material evidence what is the archaeological sources archaeological sources are the basically material evidences like a uh, historical buildings coins inscription and other things they are given the information of the detailed information like the um, coins inscription and other things is yes are no archaeological other sources basically the material evidence like a historical building coins inscription and other things it they given the important to the details they are given the place or particular things full details they will give so that is called as a archaeological sources next india has introduced by the europeans so, so who introduced the europeans india india has introduced the europeans india had the knowledge of history indians indians had have the knowledge indians had the knowledge of history how they know that uh, knowledge they will get from puranas and mythas from the ancient time only indians they have the knowledge about the history but 
this was different from the europeans model uh, construct the history that is totally different from europeans and uh, compared to indians history so uh, europeans uh, in 16th century europeans arrived in india when they arrived they arrived in 16th century so who came first means heinrich ruth translated heinrich ruth he was uh, settled in agra and he uh, translated sanskrit grammar into latin language okay heinrich ruth he was settled in agra where he settled he settled in agra and he translated sanskrit grammar into latin languages about 350 years ago ago he constructed so after that a century later uh, many people for example british got the revenue rights he came to agra after that britishers uh, got the revenue rights in bengal so they try to understand the history because they are like more for our traditional culture customs and all so that's why they are very interested to uh, understand our history so that's why that is a one thing that uh, it is helpful to gain the uh, bengal uh, revenue rights okay they came to bengal no it is very helpful to them after that what they done they done that manusmriti bhagavad gita and other great literary works translated into the english language so uh, britishers came no they are interested our traditional culture and things so what they done after that our famous uh, books uh, will be done that one manusmriti bhagavad gita and other great literary works they are translated into the english language so after that sir william Jones, Sir William Jones was contributed to the study of Indology. Who contributed? Sir William Jones contributed the study of Indology. Indology is nothing but the study of India. Indology means the study of India. And he came to India as a judge of the Supreme Court in Bengal. So why he came? He came as a Supreme Court judge. Who? Sir William Jones came as a India a judge. Okay, he came to India as a judge of Supreme Court. Where he came? He came to Bengal. and he established the after that he established the asiatic society the asiatic society in year 1784 ce at calcutta so where he started he started at calcutta sir william jones was multilingual expert means he knows very all the languages he was very expert in the languages and he translated the great works like geeta govinda manava dharma shastra and kalidasa shakuntala these books are translated into the english languages after that max muller max muller is a one of the european he came so he is a uh, one of the german scholar sorry he was one of the german scholar and he wrote english work uh, which book he wrote he bo wrote that scared book of the east okay he wrote the scared book of the east james mill also a historian from scotland he wrote that story of india he wrote that story of india in how many volumes will be there there is six volumes but this and uh, this uh, scholars they are never visited india see max muller and james mill they are never visited india but they are understand our language and they wrote they are translated into the uh, nava books into the english languages so next habi dubis habi dubis is a french missionary so he is a started french missionary he arrived to settle at ganja ganja okay habi dubis had a french missionary he arrived to the settled at ganja near the shrirangapatna where he came he came and settled in the ganja near the shrirangapatna he lived as a sage who lived as a sage habi dubis is lived as a sage habi dubis lived as a sage and he had a the local culture why he came to india means he has to adapt the local culture so that's why he is lived like a sage and where he lived he lived as a shrirangapatna like a sage and why he lived means to adapt the local culture and local people uh, and all they are calling as a dodda swami while he, we are looking at him means we can know like a sage only so And that's why the local people all are telling he is a Dodda Swami, and he wrote Hindu manners. What he wrote? He wrote Hindu manners through the 
first rivers and varna shrama he wrote hindu manners customs and ceremonies he was presented in india so what is there in india customs rules regulations traditional these things and all there he abi dubis was wrote in the book so after that he abi dubis lived here 24 years how many years he lived he lived as 24 hours sorry 24 years we are how many years he lived in india He lived in 24 years uh, in India. After that, he returned to France. So after he returned to the France. By the time, what he done? He apart from that, he wrote that all those things, customs, value, thoughts, festivals, and world national system in his work. That book he wrote everything. Indians customs, value, thoughts, festivals, and Varna Shrama system. What do you mean by Varna Shrama? Varna Shrama is the divisions of society. By the time they have four Varnas, which are those that is Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. These are the four uh, traditional Varna Shrama will be there that time. No, these things and all he wrote. After that, we can see many Europeans who are the famous European smiths. That is Francis, Francis Buchan, Cool, Villas, Michael, D. L. Rice. These are the European scholars recorded Indian culture, traditional everything in that their languages. They are recorded very successfully. So I hope everyone are understood this lesson. Thank you.